Let's try this one. Oh yeah, we're putting solar panels here. Got a whole cool project coming up about that. Hi, it's been a little while. Hope you've been well. This past winter, we've had a bunch of storms here. We had so many trees come down on the property. Like a hundred, I don't know, a ton. We've been spending so much time cleaning it all up, uh, getting the chainsaw out. Now, cleaning up fallen trees turns out to be a lot of work. Uh, so I figured we might as well have some fun with it too, right? River birch. It's a birch. I think it's a river birch. Kind of a nice light wood. Cedar. The darkness inside kind of gives it away. Beech. Silvery, kind of a funny shape, don't you think? This one, dogwood. 99% sure this is dogwood. Let's try this out. Let's make something with these um, and compare them with each other and kind of see how they are to work with. This is one of the uh, stumps we just, or one of the trees we just took down. I'm gonna use it as a uh, splitting bench, whatever. I got my fro and I got a, a large rustic mallet. Good crack going. Okay. Isn't that pretty amazing? Okay, beach. We have quite a few beach trees down and I picked this piece up because I thought it had an interesting shape. Now, American beech grows in the US from Maine to Northern Florida and into Wisconsin and Texas westwards. Um, so it's kind of all over. Uh, and in Swedish, beech is called bok. That's the name for beech and bok means book. So I don't know why that is, why they call it that. Let's see what the app says. I think this is beach. Anybody else using picture this? The app also says this is American beach. I really do like how smooth this one is. However, as I'm working with this beach, I'm finding it, I'm almost wondering sometimes, oh, is this holly which I have over here? Because it looks so similar, uh, the wood itself. And maybe because I have some rel relatively small pieces and I haven't been able to see that distinctive grain that beach has when you buy like beach in the store. It has that very kind of fine pour. You know it right away when you see it. But I haven't really seen that in these branches. So I don't know. So I've been thinking about what I want to make with all of these. Um, this one is pretty obvious, kind of a funny spoon. Um, cedar is not a good idea to use for anything that you want to you know, use in the kitchen or eat with. Um, it's like has all these kind of weird resins in it and um, it can be kind of toxic. <laughs> well, it, it repels bugs, you know, which is why you use it for outdoor projects and stuff like that, which also means you don't want to you know, consume it or use it for spoons or anything like that. This to me looks like cedar from this very special kind of bar. Mm. Mm, it smells so good. I have been so enjoying um, identifying more wood species. I mean, I know that a lot of people know this by heart, that it's not a big deal. According to my trusty wood book, uh, Eastern Red Cedar is mostly used for lead pencils. However, the book is from 1959, so that might have changed. Of course, the, uh, this purple color turns kind of brown as it sits. So I decided to put the cedar away and embark on making the weirdest beach spoon yet. Here you can see my favorite tool by far when it comes to carving, this little razor sharp hatchet. I think it's so much fun to bring the wood down using it. And of course, it's a lot faster than if you were just using a knife. For the bowl part, um, I'm going in between using the gouge here and then hook knife. I found the gouge to be easier on like a wider bowl, but when you have tight angles and a smaller bowl, it's easier to use the hook knife uh, to get a good result. And that is a spoon. Yeah, it's going to be a spoon. 
I recently learned that the beech nuts are edible. Um, I wonder what you can do with those. Making this piece though <laughs> reminded me that while it's really fun to find a piece that's all kind of crooked and weird, um, they're not the most fun to carve because there's like weird knots and stuff inside them and the grain is all over the place. So it's kind of difficult. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Moveen, which makes these really practical gloves to wear in the workshop or when you're doing gardening or construction or whatever. They're quite comfortable. They're not thick and bulky, but quite light. Uh, my favorite part, they're cut resistant. I mean, they're not cut proof, but they will protect you against accidental cuts when using tools um, and carving. I try to get some marks on the leather inside the glove here with my knife and nothing. So great when you're handling sharp metal, glass, that kind of thing. The grip is excellent and they work well even if they get wet. Plus you can throw them in the wash machine when they get dirty. There's a touchscreen function so you can browse your phone. Now I'm wearing size medium, but there are many sizes available. So if you're looking for your next pair of gloves, make sure to check out the description. They're having a grand opening and there's a discount code below as well. So thanks so much to Movine and now let's get back to work. So um, this right here is where we took down a bunch of the river birches. One here, one here, one there, over there too. All birch logs. Right. I grew up on a street surrounded by birch trees. So I always liked them and watched them a lot when I was young. There are many different kinds of birches, however. I'm pretty sure this is the river one. Just split it a bit further. I figure I'm gonna make a long, kind of thin, kind of wonky spoon with this one. Okay, river birch. This is also known as water birch, red birch, black birch. It's also called a mother tree, frequently planted in memory of mothers. Of course, when you're carving, one of your biggest concerns is keeping the tools sharp. If they're dull, it's not as easy, it's not as fun, it's not as safe. I'm just using a stone and some oil and finding the edge here. You don't need anything fancy. And more frequently, I do some stropping on leather with compound, which is really effective. I really should sharpen the hook knife. I need to do a little dowel with sandpaper on it uh, to sharpen that one. Two basic spoons done. Beach, birch. I love this little one. So here you can see a bunch of trees. Some of these fell down and then we've been kind of taking some out. Here I believe is the dogwood that I'm currently working with. You can see oak so easily from, I mean look at this grain right here. If you're familiar with oak, you see right away that's oak. Um, and here we have beech. So dogwood is a really pretty tree, gives nice flowers in the spring. Apparently one of its uses of the past was making golf club heads, which gives you an indication of its hardness. So just doing a little bit of planing, you can so much better see the grain of the wood, you know, because when it's a mess, it's a mess. So this is the dogwood. Uh, has a very interesting kind of pattern inside. I really like it. The other thing I found interesting is that the early colonists prepared a medicine from the bark of this tree for the treatment of malaria. And while this is not done today, some of the essence of dogwood is still used in parts of the south in whiskey, <laughs> taken as a home remedy. So there you go. <laughs> I don't know if you know anything quite as much fun as bringing wood down with a hatchet or an axe. This one's really nice and sharp. It has a great feel to it, weight in your hand. And I love this part. So, so much fun. So, this wood here, it's pretty hard, although of course it is wet, so it would be really hard when dry. I do like the heartwood in here, like being in the different color, being for the handle. We'll see how much it cracks. Lately, I've come to think of how there really are two different kinds of woodworking. And for the most part, you know, I do the other type, 
that has to do with measuring things and making joints and planing wood and, and, and making things precise. And then there's the completely different type of woodworking, which is, doesn't involve any of that, where you have wood turning and wood carving, and it's, it's like a completely different type of work. And lately I've been really kind of enjoying taking a bit of a mental break from a lot of the first type as a bit of a brain shift. Spring is here. So we have different piles going, different fires. This log right here was invested with ants. There's holly. Here's the storm for you, splitting it in half. So much of this going on. So this is the dogwood spoon uh, coming along quite nicely. I've done the majority of this with a hatchet because it's just a tough wood to work with with a knife. It just goes quite slowly, but I like it a lot. It has a great feel. I'm really into dogwood. I think this is going to be a cool one. Okay, so still haven't figured out what to do with this. Uh, let's just cut a piece off and see if we can shape it into something fun. Did you know that? President Lincoln uh, was really into carving. He always carried a knife with him and he was always whittling. I recently learned that and I found that kind of interesting. And it makes a lot of sense to me because I think this is a great activity when you're thinking about something else, when you're like trying to figure something out, when you just want to relax. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. I love the look of this. Wouldn't it be neat if this was like a hook? kind of a modern style where I bring this down, I bring this out and then you can put it in the wall and you kind of kind of see this from the, from the side, from the angle. Kind of where you get to see the shavings. Look at this spoon. See if we can get this in focus. See how um, there are like, you can see the knife marks on the inside too. Um, I always really like that. That's why I am so hesitant to bring any sanding, uh, sandpaper on these spoons. Plus you get a different kind of surface. You get a fussier surface, you know, the grain goes up in a different way. I like the, the surface of the knife much better. So let's talk about the different woods for a minute. So first of all, uh, we have this beech one, which was the funny shaped one. And I think out of all of these woods, beech is my favorite to carve with. It cuts clean. It's a nice color. Um, the grain has been really good. So I would say that's my preferred uh, wood of choice. And the shape here, the spoon, um, I guess always when you carve stuff like this, well, what are you using the thing for? And I never really want to think like that. I want to see like, oh, this is what the wood wanted me to make. It wanted me to make this weird shape. Um, and then I'll find some use for it. Birch as well. I think birch is a nice wood to carve. Um, clean, good grain, nothing weird. Actually, what I'm going to use this for is a coffee spoon when making a pour over coffee, perfecting my technique. Dogwood, first experience for me using dogwood. This is not done yet. Still working on this guy. I think I'm going to take my time with it a little bit. I don't really like to rush these kinds of things sometimes. I think they're great in between projects or you, you know, pick one up for a couple of minutes while you're waiting or you're taking a break or you're sitting outside having a cup of coffee and you're doing some carving. That's what I really enjoy. So I don't want to like rush it, but I I just love the heartwood uh, and it has, it's so, such a solid wood. Um, so I think we're going to make more stuff with the, with the dogwood. And now the cedar, and we'll see if I get to after finishing that up. It is nice and soft to work with. Of course, um, this is all wet wood. So wet wood is always softer when you're carving. Um, here's another beach spoon I made a little while ago. See how nice and white it is. When I look at this, I'm thinking to myself, is it really beach? I think so, but it looks like holly to me, doesn't it? So these two from the same type of wood. Uh, but anyway, it was nice checking back in with you guys. Got a lot of um, fun stuff coming up soon, but I hope you've been well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Shaving. Oh, look at that. It's like, that's like paper <laughs> waiting to be written on. So straight.